What's up guys, this is Sam, uh, coming to you with the review of the uh, Nixie Works Lot Fighter Rig. So, uh, this isn't going to be a long review, I'm not a big fan of the super long nut and fancy type reviews of stuff. Uh, I'm also pressed for time because the storm front's pushing through and I'm going to have to go uh, into town pretty soon. But I finally have just a, a spare second to uh, get the review out that I've been trying to do for a long time. Uh, and this is the Lot Fighter Rig. So, uh, to kind of back the story, uh, a couple years ago, Nixie Work came out with the Lot Fighter Rig. Uh, right about the time belt kit was starting to get uh, in vogue. So I was using the jungle rig at the time, and uh, the, the Lot Fighter Rig came out. Kind of an odd concept. I'd said that a few times. They reached out, hey, would you like to review it? Sure. Nothing really came of it. Uh, fast forward to about four or five months ago, they got back a hold of me and you know, I said, hey, are you still interested? I was like, yes. Uh, I'd still like to try it out just to see because I had some, some preconceived notions and I wanted to see how true those were. They said, hey, no problem, asked for my size and uh, sent me out the rig itself along with uh, one of their pouch suites. So this will be not only about the rig itself but the pouches as well. I'm not gonna go into specs as far as what it's made of, uh, necessarily anyways. Uh, I'm not gonna go into price because price is always subject to change. Uh, it's just not what I wanted to do. So to start with, what is the rig itself? So the rig itself, if you don't buy any other pouches, is the, uh, the harness system, a built padded belt system that is Molly, uh, and the infamous Nixie Works uh, super thick with three C's butt pack. So th the, the butt pack is really the biggest point of contention for the, uh, the light fighter rig. Uh, and, and it was always mine because I approached it from a traditional uh, at the time anyways, infantry mindset of dismounted infantry having to move uh, where you're having to utilize a large ruck system in order to stay in the field for an, an extended amount of time. Uh, I think that's how a lot of people approached it. And it's not necessarily wrong to approach it that way, but it's not in my opinion, or at least my opinion now, the role in which the light fighter rig excels because it doesn't. Um, it just does not play well with super large rucks. And uh, what I mean by that is, for instance, I have this pack here, this is just handy, so I grabbed it. This is a Red Wing 36, so it's only a 36 liter pack. Uh, it's, I believe, about 18 inches tall on the frame. And I'll throw that on on top of the lot fighter rig so that you can see kind of what I'm talking about. So, this is about where packs sit on the butt pack. And that's handy for keeping the weight off your shoulders. It's not necessarily wrong in that regard, but you'll get to a point where you have so much diminished returns as far as height goes. So it's not that this isn't comfortable. The pack only weighs about 20 pounds, so it's not a lot of weight. Uh, it's nothing like a 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 pound, you know, full size ruck for an extended time period. Uh, but once you start adding all of that height because the butt pack rides so high up on your back to start with. Once you start adding that, especially on an external frame that's rigid, this thing's going to kind of tower above you. So in my opinion, you're looking at adding a 30 liter or smaller pack if you want it to all mesh well and play well. And that's really not bad because again, it comes down to the role in which the light fighter kind of plays in. So if you don't think about it as an extended uh, dismount pack, or a dismount setup, and only think about it as a grab and go setup, that's when it really starts to excel. Because if you approach it from a, a citizen's defense perspective or a, a guerrilla warfare's perspective, where you're having to be light, you're having to be mobile, a light fighter rig, this actually does a pretty good job at that outside of vehicle based stuff. So, um, belt kit in general does not play well with vehicles. Uh, that's something we've talked about in the past. Uh, the jungle rig does okay. There's other things that do okay. They'll never play as well as like just a chest rig or something like that. But again, because you have this big butt pack um, that can hold a lot of stuff, which is nice, um, it's not going to play anywhere close to as decently well as, as your standard what we'll what we call standard uh, belt kit like the jungle rig. So um, let's talk about kind of how I have it set up and, and why I have it set up the way I do. Then we'll go into the pouches and then we'll kind of go into some final thoughts. So um, 
the way it's set up right now is I have a a Swagman roll in the butt pack, uh, two days worth of stripped MREs, a poncho, and I'm wanting to say some socks. That's about all that I have in the butt pack. The butt pack is pretty full in that regard, and it can hold a ton more because of the way the snow skirt is set up and the way it can adjust. It'll actually hold a ton. Like you can get this thing like way up your back full of stuff. And, um, and if you're only just grabbing this to go, that's really not a big deal because you've basically got an upgraded assault pack on your back at that point. It's, I would say, probably double the size of a standard butt pack in regards to carrying capacity. So if you wanted to say, hey, I want to set up a rig for a grab and go, I throw this on, I've got X number of mags, X amount of water, X amount of gear, I don't need anything else because it's a one to two day you know, deal, this thing's really gonna excel at that. Um, but again, you have that trade off of not being able to use larger packs. And really what I would do is set it up that way. This would be my main grab and go. And I might have like an additional hydration carrier, like a yoke or something like that, that has maybe some snivel gear and some more snacks and some water and some spare mags in it and, and throw that on if I needed it. Outside of that, this thing really kind of holds its own, especially if you wanted to run one of like, like the hard side hydrations or the, uh, the camelback straws that work on Nalgene bottles and just mount it that way and then run it up and over and have dedicated like on the move drinking water that way. This is this is kind of a getting more into that grab and go one and done mindset. Um, so the pouches on the side, the water bottle pouches that can hold pretty much anything, uh, really can pretty much hold anything. The whole 32 ounce Nalgene's, uh, I've got a standard GI one quart on this side to show you and they will even hold, which is impressive, a two quart uh, GI collapsible canteen on on those uh, pouches as well. That's pretty dang impressive um, Because of the variety if you wanted to carry lighter water because you're going to be in a more saturated environment where you can source water uh, You could just roll with a couple of one quarts or a couple of 32 ounce now jeans If you're in an area that's drier or it's your your season that you're in is drier and you need to carry more water You can throw two quart collapsibles on there. You could probably throw like one of the big 48 ounce silo now jeans on there um, again, be mindful of if you're trying to inter integrate a pack in with that because at that point you're getting pretty dang tall. Um, so it's actually pretty impressive. The, uh, the, the belt itself, the padded belt itself, is all one piece, so it's not an inner outer system like the jungle rig or others go. That's kind of a, 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 a pro and a con. It's a pro because it's all one piece. You don't have anything shifting around on you. It's a con because then you are kind of, you're, you're kind of stuck with this size. Um, you can't make it more rigid, you can't make it less rigid, so if for whatever reason it doesn't work for you, you can't change that out like you can with the jungle rig. Um, the, the padded belt itself is comfortable, it's not overly padded, it's not overly stiff, it's, it's honestly it's pretty pliable. So if you're someone who wanted it in a stiffer setup, this isn't really going to be it, they don't have a stiffener in there. I would like to see maybe an option for like a, a stiffener sleeve that was sewn in on the inside of here that you could, you know, if they sold like a neoprene or not a neoprene, but like a, uh, a plastic stiffener or something like that, or a kydex stiffener or a tegra stiffener that you could put in there to make it more stiff or rigid if you wanted it that way. Um, you're not going to be able to run a handgun unless you run a molly fork system, which I've done in the past on the jungle rig. I kind of showed that. I have, a, I have an older post on my Instagram that's kind of talking about that. Uh, you can get the uh, the molly forks that go in there. You could do it that way. Again, it's not necessarily designed for that. Um, you've got, I didn't count the molly sections. You've got ample molly sections to run, you know, at least a couple pouches, two to, two to four pouches on each side, depending on the type of pouches that you use. The harness itself, I kind of love and I kind of hate it. I, I absolutely do not care for, I'm hoping this is in film, I do not care for this big grab handle. Um, it would be different if it was like, collapsible or or just not there at all because you've already got a lot of harness to grab a hold of this just kind of gets in the way I had it snag on branches and stuff when I wasn't using utilizing a pack on my back to kind of hide it I ducked down below a branch and, and it would snag and I'd, I'd walk two three steps and it'd snap back and everything else uh, I'm not a big fan of the big grab handle on the back I understand why it's there I understand why they put it on everything you know everything just about has a grab handle I don't find it necessary because you have all the harness system here to, to even have that. The sterling strap is nice because it has the, uh, the elastic here. Um, that way you can you know expand and contract as you need to. Uh, and you can also adjust that. However, 
I don't know if you can see that. This also ends up being a snag thing because this will only go that far. That's as far as the elastic will allow it to go. You still end up with a lot of material here. And that's not adjustable. It's it's not like it's over here where you can adjust the length. Like you can you can expand it way out here and you still have this big loop. Uh, I got it because I'm a lefty. Um, I had the, uh, the toe of the buttstock actually snag on that a couple times. Uh, and I've had it snag on branches and things like that. Uh, so it's never going to be tight enough to negate that loop. Uh, I think that's just kind of something they could clean up and it, it wouldn't be a big deal. You know, make it the same length as the, the uh, max of the elastic. And then, you know, whatever's there, if you're not using it, is looped up and it, it's good to go at that point. Uh, I love how you can tailor adjust the harness on the fly without having to take it off. One of the biggest issues with like the jungle rig and other belt kits is that you have to basically take it off, make your adjustments to your tri glides, put it back on, is that good, look in the mirror, see if it's level, you know, adjust it with your pack, make sure everything's good to go. If it's not, you have to take it back off, re-thread through tri glides, tighten up, loosen, that type of deal. This, because of its design, is all easily adjusted while wearing it on your body, which is super handy. I mean, you can, you can adjust everything I can't hardly, I've got it all bound up here, but you can you can literally grab all of these to adjust on the fly, and then when you get it tailored fit to you and you're happy with it, then you can take it off and tape up your excess. I didn't tape up any of the excess. This is a review thing. I'm, I'm sending it back uh, when I'm done with it, and I'm done with it after this review is published. Uh, I'll send it back to them. And uh, so I didn't tape anything up, but all this typically would be taped up. You've got a ton of adjustment in your actual belt system, which is really nice. So um, this is, I'm wanting to say, I told them I was a 36 pant, they sent me whatever. I don't honestly know what size this is. Uh, but it's got a ton of adjustment in there. I'm wanting to say that their belt system's like a one size fits all, honestly, like it goes down to like a 32 pelt or something like that, and then it expands all the way out. So that's good for layers um, and, and seasonal changes. Uh, so yeah, the harness, the, the padding is not super overdone, which is nice, so you don't get a lot of buildup underneath the pack. However, I think they could probably go with either a little bit more padding or some type of other uh, material under that to make it a little bit more comfortable because I think 90% of people are looking at using this as a standalone rig. So you gain a little bit more comfort out of that standalone rig since you're going to most likely pack it down a little bit heavier. Uh, underneath the butt pack is, I'll see if I can show this to you. It's got a, uh, a compression strap that not only helps tighten down the, uh, the bottom of the butt pack to help keep it a lot uh, tighter, um, when you're loaded, it will also uh, work to hold like a, uh, a ground pad or something like that. If you were wanting to like pack a bivy in here and, and you wanted to bring like a thermal, thermal lock, like a Z-fold or something like that, you could fold that up and put it under there. Or if you were, you know, going to be setting in like a position in glassing for a long amount of time, you could put like a, a glassing pad, you know, cut down thermal rest or something under there just to keep with you. Or you could put whatever long object you wanted there, you know, I mean, if you're cool and you got a law, you can put a law under there, I guess. I don't know. Um, the, uh, the, the butt pack itself compresses down pretty small, uh, and it expands pretty large. And, uh, and honestly, overall, I'd give it a solid 8 out of 10 as far as the execution. There's just the little nitpick top things uh, that I've talked about now um, as far as the actual base rig goes. So now let's get into the pouches. The pouches I, I like and I don't like. So I'll, I'll talk about the GP pouches to start with. So the GP pouches that they sent are pretty generous. They're not structured, which is kind of a love and hate type of thing. Um, but they're they're pretty pretty big for uh, for the GP pouches. So you could easily fit six to probably eight, maybe even ten mags if you wanted to in one of these. If you wanted to roll heavy, you could probably put a you know a 200 round or a 400 round or a 500 round nut sack in there if you needed to. Uh, I've got like a leader's pouch, uh, a smoke grenade, a, uh, a uh, monocular in there, and I've got my compass and stuff stuffed in there for right now. I really like how they did the buckle system, having the female buckle on the, uh, the pouch itself and the male buckle on the lid. That makes you know access really easy. It's a big buckle. You can grab a hold of it, pull it out. When it comes time to close it, you just find it and push it, and you're good to go. Uh, the left side I have set up for, and I don't know if you can see how kind of bulbous out that is, they're wider pouches, but they're not real deep. And that's probably the only nitpick that I have with them. Uh, I've got like my 14 and a uh, IFAC in there. I'd like to see them because of how they ride, they could make them a little bit wider and be okay as far as width goes. 
and a little bit deeper and see like a sewn in divider that's Velcro or something uh, to where you could run like an IFAC and something else and divide that in that pouch. I think that would be a really good way to go with the GP pouches. Um, yes, you could go with individual dedicated pouches because the harness is not attached to the pouches themselves. Um, you could do whatever pouch system you want on here, but if you wanted to stick with the Nixie work system, I think that would be a good way to go. Um, on to the mag pouches. So I have the same issue with the mag pouches as I had with the velocity rig pouches and other pouches that are similar. And that's that number one, they went with really small buckles. I understand that to a degree you can't get away with anything but smaller buckles because of the overall footprint of the pouch. But not only that, they did exactly what I hated with the other pouches, which is had the female buckle on the lid and the male buckle on the actual pouch itself. So when it comes time to secure that, you have to find it and clip it in. And I know it would not seem like it's a big deal, but it is. The, that difference in orientation is really odd uh, when it comes to trying to do that one-handed without looking, especially in low light, especially under stress. Uh, and stress comes into the smallness of the buckle. So trying to grab that and pinch it and then pull the pouch open, it, it really is kind of odd. Uh, I, I don't know why a lot of companies do that. I'm sure there's a reason. Uh, it's always been a nitpick of mine. What I would rather see is the female buckle mounted to the pouch itself in a ladder adjust system because that way you could tighten it down or, or expand it out for bigger mags or taller mags or adjust the buckle height system uh, similar to like the ladder system of a lot of chest rigs for the female clip. I would put that on there. That way you could just you know split clip it, move it to whatever side uh, ladder you wanted and then clip it in and just deal with any little bit of slop that may be there, especially if you're going to have uh, a bungee retention system that's gonna help hold the mags. One thing that's odd is the, the lids are almost padded and they may be padded to a degree. This may just be the thickness of the material, but it is padded to a degree and it is Velcro. Now that is kind of nice, except for if you're rolling three mags deep, which is kind of how this is designed, there's not a whole lot of Velcro there to grab a hold of that. Um, so if for some reason this is unclipped, uh, it wouldn't take a whole lot for that pouch to, to come open if you needed it to, or if you didn't want it to, I mean. Uh, the other side of that is if you're on a reload, so I'll go ahead and do a reload and show what I'm talking about. So we'll just, we'll do a quick reload uh, and then we'll sum up the video because this is kind of the end of it. So if I needed to reload, I've accessed my tiny clip and ripped it open. I've grabbed my mag, I've inserted, this issue with the pouch because like this does not want to flop down in like a thin uh, flimsy pouch lid uh, like most pouches would, would would just kind of flop down and secure this doesn't want to do that so I have to then purposely take it and cinch it down which I may or may not have the time or ability to do so if I didn't and it's just laying like that and then I hit the deck I've had mags come out because it's set to tension for the three mags that are in here um, I've had mags shift out I've had them fall out I, I've took off running uh, like this and had them bounce out before uh, and it may just be a me thing I may just be unlucky in that regard but you know if you're going to have a velcro backup I would like to see it extend farther down into the pouch um, that way it actually does flop down or make the lid a little bit less structured that way it flops down onto the mag pouch a lot better so uh, overall I, I really like the rig I, it kind of changed my mind uh, I, I, honestly if you talk to anybody I talked about I was like hey I don't really like it because of it's not going to be good for dismounted patrol work. Uh, I still feel to a degree it doesn't play well with big rucks. So if big rucks are your life, then this probably isn't going to play super well with that. But if you're looking for something more standalone, more grab and go, more citizens defense, knock at the door, go down to the end of the street, you know, patrol the cul-de-sac type deal, this is going to be really hard to beat. Um, I'd like to see some of the changes made that I talked about. I think if they did that, they'd have like a 100% 10 out of 10 product. Um, Outside of that, I think it's probably a solid 7 to 8 out of 10. It's a really good product. If it's something that you're interested in and you think that it's going to fit the role that you need, I totally say go for it. Um, outside of that, guys, it, it is what it is. It's belt kit. It's got belt kit problems. Kind of enhanced belt kit problems just because of the size of the butt pack. Uh, so, yeah, that's pretty much it. Overall, uh, I, I hope that you liked the video. This, I don't do a whole lot of product reviews. Um, I'm going to try and do more in the future. Uh, if you liked it, let me know. If you didn't, let, let me know. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them for you. However, the people at Nixie Works probably would be uh, the ones to talk to about it since it is their product. Uh, but yeah, guys, anyways, uh, I got a jet, so take it easy, stay safe, God be with you and your family.